Spit out my load in every way. Yet I'm still welcome. Wow. In the yard oh, wow. of the king. Uh. Uh, well, I welcome back to Talking Shop. Um, we are down. back at God it. Uh, we don't and have to his crowd. Uh, yeah, he gets to talk for sure. Well, he gets to talk. Hey, <laughs> <he's> <laughs> so, uh, but we do have Tim and Ernie, and I'm Paul, and uh, we are we're well, we're getting after it today. We got uh, John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. Um, and I think what we'll do, we'll kind of we'll start with the end, verse 14, and it, and it really sets the stage for us um, that it, it says this was uh, the third time that Jesus, so this is what this text is. It's, it's a text about um, yet another appearance of our Lord um, to his disciples, the resurrected Lord. So uh, you're getting this text two Sundays after Easter. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of becoming you just the theme. Thomas last you just Sunday, right? so you've Thomas. Got, you've got yeah. You've got fear. You've got doubt, and now you've got them. And yeah, we'll find they believe. So yeah. Right so uh, um, kind of getting into it. Uh, what it starts out. What are the disciples doing, Ernie? Ernie. Yeah, I, Ernie. I just. <laughs> Ernie. Come on, Ernie. Yeah, well, you know, as we, in, you know, we, we talk about uh, they're going to the pier, uh, maybe. They're going to the pier. The Seal Beach Pier, yeah. you know, um, where I'm from. Always, me put us on Seal Beach. But um, anyways, the town of SB. Anyways, uh, so we see uh, they're they're going to fish and, um, yeah. uh, they, dude, they caught. Nada. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. And th this is... Before Jesus comes into play and shows his great miracle, yeah, uh, and he tells them the directive, and they, it's the polar opposite. They catch, man. Yeah, do you think there's something to it that um, that they're going kind of they're going back to work, like in essence the their old jobs. The 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 first appearance of our well the first two the first two Sundays the Easter Sunday the Sunday after they've seen him now, um, and. And they kind of go, I'm going fishing, right? Or, or Peter does anyway. Like, yeah. this is this was their vocation. This is what they did beforehand. And there's a sense in which they're kind of going back to it. I, I think, I guess why I think that's interesting is this is what the shepherds do when they, when they go to Bethlehem and they worship the Christ yeah. child. Then they go back. And it's like, they, they at some point you got to go back to work, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like almost like they don't know what to do with themselves at this point. Yeah, it's just kind of like, okay, what, well, what do we do with all of this? Isn't that how Easter is for a lot of people? Is yeah. that they turn the page? It's good, and, yeah. And, well, yeah, because you uh, had, you know, you had if, if you normally have a hundred people in worship, you had two hundred last Sunday. Yeah. If you normally have two hundred, you had four hundred, right? Double, right. double, yeah. and double, now yeah. this coming Sunday, you know, when you when you have. Then you'd have Thomas, and then you get the, the dip, right? You'll have that's a third of what you had. It'll bounce right. back yeah, up yeah. maybe on this right. Sunday. But, you know, and, 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 and you'd be tempted to think that's something that has to do something with you, right? Yeah. And, oh, interesting. And your work. Yeah, yeah. And your true. ability, right? Which fits right in with this text. Yeah. It really does. True, yeah. Going back to your job, you're slugging away at it, and, and nobody cares. Yeah. You preached an awesome sermon on Easter. <laughs> Did you? Thomas, yeah. Thomas, you were a little sluggish because yeah. it was a long yeah, week. Yeah, right, right, right. But this one, you're back, back at, at it, it, man. You're doing what you do. You're and firing all cylinders and right. right. 50 people so uh, so they go. They're frustrated. Obviously, they stay out all night. There's no fish. Uh, as the day breaks, the dawning of the new day, yeah. there's Jesus standing on the shore. Yeah, and um, yeah, they don't they don't know who he is until he does what? What does he have them do? He yells at them from the shore. Um, hey kids! Yeah, yeah kids. He does. He calls them children, right? Um, and uh, what does he have them do? What's his instruction? Throw it in. Do it again on the yeah. right side of the boat. Get in. Hey, try the other side. You know, it. It, I, it sounds insane. Right, I mean, it's same thing he does in Luke, though, right? So sure. In the, Luke has records this miracle, but at the beginning of his ministry, right? Right. Yeah. It's the same thing. Throw Miraculous throw catch of fish. Side. Right. Yeah. Uh, so they do so. They cast the net in again, 
and uh, and there's a lot of fish in it, right? Um, and it is the disciple whom uh, Jesus loves, that is John himself, who uh, leans over to Peter and whispers, that's the Jesus. That's the Jesus. It, this, <laughs> this is the Lord, right? This is him, right? Here he is. Um, and when Peter hears because that... they've seen this miracle before. I mean, not in John's gospel, right. per se, but they've seen this... They've seen him do this kind of thing before. Yeah, the, you would have to think, right? This, hey, the, put the net in over there. They're like, wait a minute, we're fishing. We right. know what we're doing. The super abundance, <laughs> right? The super right. abundance yeah. of God, yeah. Uh, they throw it in again. Huge catch of fish. Um, John says that, that it is the Lord. Peter, when he hears that, uh, he he uh, he girds himself up. He puts on his uh, outer garments that he had taken off because he was working hard out there in the boat. And he just jumps right in and starts swimming ashore. Hundred right? yards. Hundred yards. Nice yeah. Swim, How many would we? Have? Would we ever? Can you swim hundred yards, Ernie? Uh, <laughs> get there. Yeah, I'd get there. I'd go. I'd go fifty. I'd go fifty. I'd go fifty. I'd go fifty. I'd go. He gets the floaties. I'd go fifty. And so he gets to the shore, uh, and it, what transpires on the shore is it's interesting. Um, uh, G- they get there, and what's Jesus doing when he shows up? He's cooking fish. Got the fire going. He's yeah. making breakfast, right? Yeah. Uh, and I know, Tim, you were really offended that somebody would have fish for breakfast. Yeah, that's gross. But... <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but apparently, donuts, all right. That, that makes sense. But yeah. here they are. Uh, they are breaking the fast with fish and bread. Uh, and he gives them the bread and some of the fish, right? Uh, and he... he uh, he tells Peter to go get some more fish, mm-hmm. which they caught out of what he directed them to do, right? Mm-hmm. Bring some of that as well. Uh, and John records this 153 yeah. number, right? What, what have you heard about that I, number? I don't know. I always hear stuff that I go, eh. This is, this is one of those uh, odd things, I think, if, you're, if your sermon is focusing on decoding the number of fish. 153 fish, fish right, um, yeah. You're going to go awry. Like, it is weird. I remember um, uh, a professor of the seminary, Dr. Shuckard, having a conversation with him about it. And he, I mean, this guy, Johanna in literature is his stuff. And he was like, I don't know. Like, there's times where it's clear what the numbers mean, yeah. especially with John. And here, it's really weird. It's what just like, have you heard about it? Yeah. Anything good, Ernie? Oh, oh! Because you, know, you went to the other seminary. Yeah. So. Did they have it figured out? <laughs> Did they have it figured out over there? They haven't figured out. No. <laughs> no, I know Dr. Just had a lot of, on that. I I can't off the top of my I can't really explain that clearly, but I know it is out there. But I think uh, with whatever 153, I think the add up to nine. The point is, is that it was a, it was a massive amount yeah, of fish. It was a bunch of fish. That's the point. That's the point. That's the point. That's right. That's really right. That's the right. Point, right? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then you get, uh, it kind of culminates uh, with that uh, nobody asks him now who this is. And I, and I think, in may, many ways, maybe that's the focus is it gets to this point that now they're not saying, hey, who's this guy? There's no more Whoops. doubt. There's no more fear. Yeah. And, and that In fact, because they run it, towards him. Yeah. Now. And it says uh, uh, that they know, right? They now know that this is the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, and maybe that number three, that might be the only number that's really important. That's the third time yeah. that he's appeared to him. You can do maybe some that they, they know he's the Lord, and then he takes uh, and he gives them the bread. I mean, this has images of uh, the road to Emmaus. Yeah. You know, he knows him in the, the breaking of the bread, yeah. uh, where he's, he, you know, didn't we recognize him in the breaking of the bread, those kind of things. Yeah, um, and, and of course, there's the sacramental. Yeah, stuff going on. So I mean, Peter dives into the water for heaven's sake. Sure. And comes out of the water, knowing his Lord. Well, that's true. You, know, you, can, you can do you've got the that. sacramental pieces with water, <laughs> and bread. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you could really so, go that way with it. Too. So it's uh, two Sundays after Easter. Uh, the big crowds are definitely gone, um, uh, and uh, and yet you're you're still there. You're still preaching to the faithful. So. Tim, what do you what do you focus on as a preacher on this Sunday with a text like this? Yeah, I mean, you? there's so much stuff, but but 
you could do the phrases of Jesus. I mean, that that could take you kind of through a four-part movement of how you preach it. It'll help you memorize it, right? Because you can move through that. Uh, I mean, this idea that you start with children, do you have anything? Right? Do you have any fish? You wouldn't have to go do what you do. Yeah, when that's you kind of stuck without sure. me. Yeah, you do what you do. Do you have anything out of? You got that? anything? You got anything out of oh, what you? Oh, everything that oh, you, you don't? do? Oh, you don't. <laughs> Oh. oh, oh, wow, interesting. <laughs> well, why don't you do it with me, <laughs> okay? And instead, do it on the other side, which won't make any sense to you because it, it, the okay. left side of the boat, the right side, it's five feet. Right? That's right. That's right. You could do it on the do it on the other side, but do it now. Do it with me. Huh. They do it with him. Miraculous catch. Right. Right. They recognize their Lord in the middle of it. Uh, that's your second movement, right? This idea that when we do stuff with Christ, He doesn't tell us what it's going to be, but He promises that He's going to bless. Our lives. I mean, it just does. Okay. Uh, yeah. In one way yeah. or another, faithfulness, whatever it might be, uh, and and then they, they he says bring the catch, right? Bring in what you caught, and and it's recognizing right who Jesus is. There's your fourth move: recognizing his place in our lives, recognizing yeah. Yeah, yeah. his supremacy, recognizing his kingship in, over everything, and then you've got this final piece where he comes and and now he he cooks it for you. Right, and he goes, here's, here's everything you brought in with me, and I'm giving it back to you now. Hmm. Eat it. He did, be a at the end, at of, the end it. of the day, he didn't really need any of it. Did, <laughs> you right, needed it. Right. You needed okay. it. Yeah. You caught it with him, and now he's giving it back to you. I mean, yeah. This is just like this is like the, the sacrifices in the tabernacle where they would, I mean, you bring the you'd bring the meat to sacrifice. Well, what parts did God want? He wanted the guts and all the stuff that you don't want anyways. <laughs> it was basically a big barbecue so you sure. could hang out with your family and the priests and, yeah. and have a party. I mean, it was yes. awesome. Sure. You know, and it's the same thing here. It's, huh. it's him being high priest and giving all the good stuff back, back to you. Right. I mean, it's just it's just Jesus being him over and over yeah. and over again. So you could preach it that way with the yeah, four definitely. movements of the word yeah. of Christ. Ernie, you got any insights on this? How would you uh, uh, tackle it? I'm, not, I'm a lover, not a fighter. But anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> how would you love this into the into the Ooh, hearts and minds hey. of your people? Yeah, <laughs> Come on, Ernie. Yeah. No, I do. Well, I, I think it. it <laughs> little do you know what goes on here. Anyways, yeah, but right. uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think on all seriousness, I think the way I'd preach it is uh, uh, really the the continual the identity of this resurrected life that we have, and you know, you know, when we talk about Monday Thursday about the Last Supper, but also Jesus washing the the, disciples, the disciples' feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's Which is whole... John's Gospel, too. So you can connect that to this. Yes. I mean, the it, washing of the feet, it, you can't forget. And this is the wedding feast, feast of Cana, too, right? I yeah. Mean, the wedding feast of Cana, at the, at the end, what's, what's, well, not in the end, in the middle of Mary goes, do whatever he tells you. Yeah, that's true. Here, right here. You even get a reference at, uh, was it Nathaniel, who's there at Cana and Galilee? Right. You know, right. Anyway. And, and again, do, do whatever he <laughs> yeah. tells you. Left yeah. side, right side, whatever he tells you. No, I think that's important because when we talk about, again, I think I was talking about uh, with Paul here about the church and how what what we are as a church, what we're called to do, and uh, that is to cast the net to all the world as the church is the boat, right? And mm -hmm. and to do that with the word and sacrament. I think sometimes we get so convoluted by these whole new techniques of how to grow your church or whatever, right? But if it's by the word of the Lord, we trust in what the word says. And we trust that his word is cast out and will not, Isaiah 55, will not return void, right? That right. We, we have confidence and assurance that it's his word. And that's what we're casting out. And we love and serve as Jesus does here yet again um, in his third resurrection. Um, not third resurrection, but in his third. <laughs> appearance. We got it. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> Anyways, but, <laughs> but in his it, third appearance. Uh, <laughs> but, that, but I think it's important that we, because dudes guys out there that's listening to this you know what i mean it's like how you have that temptation of how can we be more relevant in the as a church in the world no just stick to the goods in what god has commanded us to do yeah. i think that's very important yeah. to remember and, and never to go beyond that just stick with the word because yeah. that's where I you mean, have the we catch we talked about that earlier today too that we, we have one thing yeah. it's the resurrection I mean, and we go this back is what to we do. Over yeah. and over. I mean, <laughs> no right. matter what text you're right. preaching, you're essentially preaching. Whether it's Christ Easter Sunday or the Sunday after Easter the or the Sunday after that exactly. or the Sunday and, after and, that, and here we got, go. It's got very yeah. little to do with you, and it's yeah. got everything to do with him. Right. That's right. right. That's right. All right. Uh, that's. I don't. 
I was going to add something. I it's unnecessary. No, I don't <laughs> said it all. You you con you covered all bases. But uh, yeah, so it's great. Uh, uh, continue to uh, uh, share us with your friends and colleagues. Um, uh, like us on uh, YouTube. Check out craftofpreaching.com. And uh, time's getting short if you want to sign up for the uh, uh, Craft of Preaching uh, workshop that'll be in Chicago. Uh, go to craftofpreaching.com and the, click on the banner at the top, uh, and it's all right there. But uh, God bless you, and, uh, and God bless your preaching.